but it is nice and tight. It can go anywhere. Well, that went somewhere. Shit. Like I've got some repairs to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft. If this is your first time here, my name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills. Um, today's video was supposed to be me coming down to my camp and practicing some elementary bushcraft skills like knife skills and, and fire by friction and that kind of stuff but as you can see we may need to dedicate a little bit of time and effort into getting camp sorted out again. Um, if you guys watched my last video, you would have seen that I wanted to create a bit of an overhang uh, over my camp, so I didn't have to put a big tarp up over the fire every time it rained. Uh, and I think that might have been my undoing. Um, I was really struggling to find a way to keep the overhang kind of taut, so I ended up putting a ridge line between two trees. Uh, and I'm guessing uh, that that's what has caused this. Um, I'm guessing the angle wasn't right or something like that and the winds just come up or it wasn't the tarp wasn't pinned down properly or, or something but as you can see the winds just blown it all over I mean unless somebody has come along and, and trashed my camp which I, uh, I doubt so I'm not giving up on the whole overhang idea I do still want to try and find a way of, um, of having one uh, being able to leave it I don't particularly want to have to take it down every time just in case the wind decides to trash my camp but We'll see, so we're going to try again. Um, this does afford me an opportunity to, to show you guys how to uh, carve some tent pegs, uh, or not tent pegs necessarily, but pegs, carve some pegs and stuff like that. So we're going to look at it as a blessing, not a pain in the ass, and we're going to crack on. All right, so I think it makes sense to start from the ground up. So we're going to take the tarp off uh, and see about sorting out the main structure um, of the shelter itself because and at the moment, as you can see here, like the, uh, my main diagonal support line isn't even attached to my ridge pole anymore. It's completely come off and it's, uh, it's waving about. So I need to sort that out. So let's get the tarp off and we'll, um, we'll go from there. Taut line hitch worked great though. Thanks, Joe. main ridge pole because at the moment for some reason I can't remember can't even think why I wouldn't have done it this isn't attached so I'm gonna get this attached to my main ridge pole using a Canadian jam uh, so a Canadian jam knot is really simple uh, for anyone that doesn't know how to do it you put a stuffer knot in hopefully you guys can see that's just a normal overhand knot there and then another one slightly behind it that's loose and then what you do is you get a decent sized piece of paracord not like this one good start Okay, take two, <laughs> get a decent sized piece of paracord, you make your stopper knot, just a simple overhand knot, <clears throat> and then another one that's loose just behind it. Hopefully you guys can see that, and then you pop your paracord around the two 
two objects you want to cinch together at uh, approximately a 45 degree angle and then your tail end comes through the loose knot which will then tighten against your stopper knot and you can then really rack, rack on it That won't go anywhere. And I know I said that before, my entire camp fell down, but this should hold it. Now I have large amounts of excess, so if you want to or you're concerned, obviously you can just go around a few extra times, mix it up to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, basic structure uh, is finished again. Um, I've put an extra support beam um, back on the bottom here. If you watched my last video, you would have seen that the bottom one had actually snapped um, over time, and I didn't replace it last time. I actually just forgot that I needed to. Uh, so there we go, so I've replaced it with a, a stronger one now, so hopefully that should stand the test of time a bit better. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is carve some pegs. So I need to carve quite a few for my plan to work. Um, I know I put three in the bottom of my tarp, um, last time in my last video and obviously didn't do a huge amount to keep it um, stuck down but that may have just been because of the size of the pegs. Um, I'm not entirely sure so I'm going to carve some more. So I need three um, for the bottom. Uh, I'm going to do, I'm potentially thinking about doing two for the sides um, to pull my tarp out a bit that way perhaps and have some, some cordage going into the ground over there to keep it bit more stable. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet, it's just a thought, so I'll carve some pegs for that and I'm going to need to, for the front, um, given the new way that I'm going to try and put my overhang up. So let's get some wood and uh, then I'll show you how to carve the peg. Alright, so I've selected my uh, bits of wood that I'm going to use. Uh, this was some deadfall that was just on the floor uh, in the woods around here. Um, before I decided to use this piece, I did just give it a quick test to make sure it's not just going to snap the second any pressure is put onto it, and I think these will be fine. So in terms of size, you're looking for roughly about thumb thickness. I know that this one's a little bit thicker than my thumb, um, but, it, but it'll be okay. And in terms of length, you're looking at, well for me, it's kind of just over the size of my hand going up my, going up my wrist slightly. So that's the kind of size that uh, I'm going to be working with. Um, and these are very, very simple to, to make. The, the idea is to point one end, which we will pop into the ground. Um, we will then put a notch in the other end to, uh, as a kind of a stopping point, uh, so that if it's paracord attached to it or whatever, um, it will ride up and it will catch into the wood so it, it won't go anywhere. Sounds fairly simple, hopefully. Um, one thing to consider whenever you are doing any carving is safety. Now I know this, this may seem obvious and it may seem like um, I'm teaching you to suck eggs kind of thing, but you can't stress how important it is. It's absolutely vital that you have a safe environment, that there's nowhere around you, and that at no point do you cut towards yourself. If you are going to be working sort of sat down like this, uh, it's really important to keep your elbows on your knees. Elbows on knees, which is something that um, bushcraft instructors will say to you all the time, elbows on knees. That's because no matter where you cut, you're not going to cut into towards your kind of danger triangle. So this is your danger triangle. Um, your femoral artery is on the inside of your leg, and if you if you nick that, you can bleed out in a matter of seconds. I think it's about 30 seconds it takes to, to bleed out completely, and you know that's it. So if you are going to be sat down, elbows on knees at all time. So enough waffling. Um, let's get on with it. So as I said, first thing I'm going to do is point one end. The other thing to bear in mind, uh, of course, before you do any of this, is that you have a nice sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, then this is gonna make your, your life a lot more complicated. So, we're just gonna point one end. There's loads and loads of different cuts that you can use to do this. Sometimes, actually, when it comes to dead wood, it's easier to split it down so that you have a triangle. It's just so that you have less wood to work with. Um, but I'm not in any kind of rush, so I'm just gonna take my time um, and point the end of this. Elbows on knees. There's other ways that you could do this cut. So for example, 
nice safe ways to pop it on a, on a log or a chopping block uh, and push down. That way when you're pushing down your knuckles are coming off the end of the, um, the log and the knife, even if it slips, the only place it's going to go is into the log itself. You don't have to take off you know, huge chunks in one go, just a little bit at a time is fine. If you find yourself getting caught like I am, just stop and do another cut. Just take the knife away and start again. So we're just slowly making our way around to form a point. Now I think that should be absolutely fine, so all I'm going to do now is taper the tip a little bit um, just to put a secondary bevel on it to make sure that it stays in the ground and it doesn't mushroom out, I think is the term, when we knock it into the ground. So all I'm using, doing here, the cut that I'm using, is to use my left thumb to apply pressure to the back of the blade. It's nice and controlled. It's really good for intricate work. Okay, I think that'll do. So the next thing to do is then to um, just, I can't remember the technical term, but we're basically we're taking a little bit of, of wood off the top of the end that we're gonna be hammering into the ground, that way, Again, the piece of wood won't mushroom out and will make your life a lot more easy when you're knocking it in. So I'm using that same cut, pushing my thumb just to get the top slightly more level there that I need to get off. There we go. Now, to perform the stop cut, um, all I'm going to do is put, I'm going to pop my knife blade on the piece of wood like that, hammer it with a baton, which I've got in my bag, which I'll get in a second, and then carve out um, up to the line, and that's called a stop cut, because the where I'm carving, it will stop where I've made the cut. So I'm gonna get my baton. Um, whenever you stop to do anything, it's always really important to make sure you make your knife safe. There's no place safer than in the scabbard, or the sheath, whatever you wanna call it. Baton. Okay, so where I'm going to place it, it's probably an inch and a half down maybe. All I'm, the reason I'm doing that is to avoid the knot that's there, by the way. So there we go, pop that there. You don't need to really hammer it in, you're not trying to cut the piece of wood entirely, it's just, as I say, whoops, to give you something to carve against. And all I'm doing is gently pushing the knife across to carve out up to that stop cut. And there we have it, you see that notch there? So when I can rest my power, my power cord against that and it's into the ground, it's not going to go anywhere because it's going to come up against the stop cut that I've made. I hope that makes sense. So, um, I have quite a few of these to carve. I think I need to carve seven, roughly, to make sure I'm okay and sorted. So I'm going to get on with carving the rest of them. And I will get back to you 
in just a second when I've done it. Okay, so I'm all pegged out at the back. Now, the next part of my plan, or at least uh, the next overhang thing that I'm going to attempt to do is to have two upright poles at the edge of the tarp. So I'll keep the, I'll try and keep the tarp at a bit of an angle this time so the wind doesn't just go underneath it. And then what I'll do is I'll have a pole here, so it needs to be about my chin height maybe. And then what I'll do is, is I'll attach some paracord to the edge of the tarp, wrap it around the pole, the support pole if you like, and then power cord will continue down and I'll hammer it in um, with another peg and I'll do that on both sides which means I may have to move my move move means I may have to move my wood store but that's not a big deal and then hopefully hopefully that will mean that it won't all just blow up in the wind um, this putting a stick thing up um, was actually shown to me uh, on my wild company uh, Wild Bushcraft Company uh, instructors course the other weekend. Um, it looked really good. They seem to think it works quite well. I mean, I don't know how well it'll hold up in terms of a permanent shelter, but it seems to work overnight with tarp setup. So we'll try it. And if I come back again and the whole thing has collapsed again, then we will we will first cry and then we'll uh, revisit the uh, situation and look at another attempt. But yeah, so that's that's my plan. So I need two kind of chest high poles to use. Okay, and I can use actually the second ridge pole that I used to have up here, the one that was higher up for my tarp to go over. That will certainly give me one, if not both of them. So let's do it. close to the tarp, if you can get it, so I reckon that'll do. Then we go wrap this bad boy around here a few times. Which apparently is easier said than done. And then Which you have done. Uh, peg her out to kind of here. Cool. Two on the outside, two on the inside. Oh, almost messed it up. Two on the inside. Okay. Not too shabby. I've just realised that I may have actually been very clever doing it this way because I can take these out when I'm not here and just have the tarp kind of loose. I can fold these into, you know, into my shelter itself. So then hopefully the wind won't catch it and when I come back it should be fairly easy just to pop these back up. Maybe I'm clever. Who knew? Right. I need to do the same on the other side, so I just need to have a look at the positioning. I may have to move the wood stove. Yeah, 
that's going to collapse. <laughs> oh well, it was rubbish anyway. Okay, let's try this again. I'm here, Tom. Yeah, you disobey me. Yeah, that works a bit better. And I can tie this off down there, possibly even to this tree, although I think down to the ground makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Not too shabby at all. So this skyline over here to this thing is not a problem at all, but this one coming out here, I just need to make sure that I remember that it's there, uh, otherwise I'm going to be tripping over that a lot. Anyway, uh, I'm quite happy with this, I'm quite happy with the way it looks, um, I'm quite happy with the fact that I can take it down so that hopefully the wind doesn't make it take off again. Um, so I guess the next thing to do is um, put some of the weight back on the back. So I'm going to put my support poles or sort of ridge, ridge poley things um, back on the back, put the duff on, um, and then hopefully the tarp will not bow as much and it will look okay. And then the next time I come down, I can just put these two supports up. So I'll leave, probably leave the tent pegs in, the tent pegs, I'll leave the big pegs in where they are, and hopefully I should just be able to peg it out quickly and everything will be gravy. Um, having said that, time. Okay, so it's just gone 12. I've been here since about 9 o'clock, just after 9 o'clock, something like that. Bits in my pocket. Um, and I fancy a drink, so I think I'll get a coffee on the go. Let's boil us some water, let's have a coffee, and then we'll get to uh, the back in a minute. Cheers guys. Okay, break time is over. Watch time is over. Boom, then. Had it both ways. No regrets. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, break time is over. So it's time to get everything back on the back. Um, I've decided that I want to put um, bit more weight on the back than I've had previously. I mean, I put this up while I was waiting for my coffee to boil, and um, even now it's pushing some of the smaller sticks off. It's pushing some of the smaller sticks off. So I think I want to get some, if I can, find some taller, um, taller long bits and put the heavier bits potentially at the top. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that's what I'm going to do. So um, you've seen me do this before, so I won't make you watch it. All I'm going to do is put everything back on. Um, so I'm going to get cracking with that. I'll catch up with you in a minute. And just like magic, the back is covered again. Again, same as last time, it's by no means the best job I've ever done. You can see there's loads of space up at the top of the tarp there that needs covering, but I've had enough for doing this. You know, when you take this stuff off, put it back on, as often as I have, it gets real boring, real quick, so it'll do. Alright guys, so now that camp is <laughs> repaired to some degree, let's hope it doesn't blow over again. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, I recently did a uh, level two bushcraft instructors course with a company called Wild Bushcraft Company, um, and it was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I have to go back uh, in a few weeks to do an assessment day to demonstrate some of the skills uh, and actually teach um, two groups two um, different things. One being, uh, I think it's like a tools uh, workshop or a knife workshop and a fire workshop. Um, and one of the things that I think they're going to want me to be able to demonstrate is the ability to make feather sticks. Now, if you've watched my videos before, if you've seen, if you've been watching the channel for a little while, 
and I've said it before, you'll see that feather sticks are something that I, I absolutely suck at. For some reason, I just haven't been able to get the technique and I can't really figure out why, so I'm just gonna have to practice and practice and practice. So um, I thought I would have a go today. Um, camp set up again, we've got, still got a little bit of time, there's still a fair amount of daylight left. So I've split some wood down. Uh, these are probably a little bit thinner than maybe I should have, um, but they're about almost an arm's length, not quite an arm's length, not my arms anyway. Um, but I thought I'd have another go. Another go. Um, got a few bits here to try. So I'm going to attempt to create some feather sticks. So just to demonstrate, uh, because having a sharp knife is very important, uh, hopefully, if the wind stays still for a second. Whoops. Come on, wind, calm down. All I'm trying to do is demonstrate that my knife is sharp. Okay, so you can see my knife is sharp. By the way, for anybody that doesn't know, that's not actually a great idea because it does blunt your knife doing it on paper but anyway the point is my knife is sharp so what the guys uh, from Wild Bushcraft said to do is split some wood down which you can see I've done so this is or this was dead standing wood I found it just in the woods behind my camp it was actually hung up in a tree but it was vertical so it was kind of still counts as dead standing I think uh, the wood is very dry um, which is perfect uh, and I split it down so that I have a ridge here now what they said to do first is to take off the ridge so we've got a bit of a sort of a, a nice flat bit uh, of inner wood there and then work the edges of that flat bit to create feather sticks. I hope that makes sense. Apparently it's a good thing to do is to keep your arm as straight as you can and kind of work your way down to start and finish at the same point every single time. So fingers crossed here we go let's hope I don't get overly frustrated straight away so to start with all I'm doing is attempting to take off that initial bit even that for some reason I'm struggling with I asked for advice um, when I did this last time uh, and a lot of you guys gave me some really really good tips um, about the way that I was cutting like I was trying to put too much pressure into my cuts I think so I'm going to attempt, <laughs> going to attempt to keep it nice and smooth and not put too much pressure into it. Okay, got a bit of a smooth surface there. There's a little bit of a knot there, which I'm going to try and take out because I don't think that's going to be particularly good for me. So, try and get the right angle, just do that gently, keep my arm locked, gently work the ridges. Okay, I think this bit of wood's probably done. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, in fairness, that's probably better than I achieved last time. Uh, feather sticks, man. Cue the angry music montage.
to think that I'm improving. <laughs> oh, but I still definitely, definitely suck at feather sticks. But it will not defeat me. I will find the perfect piece of wood and I will create a good feather stick at some point. The middle of this piece that I chose is all rotten and punky, so I don't know if that made any difference in terms of the way it split, like it wasn't a clean split when I was battening it. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really feel like I had a decent piece to work with, but you know what they say, bad workman. Anyway, anyway, uh, it won't defeat me and I will keep, keep, <coughs> excuse me, I will keep practicing uh, and I am gonna nail it. Um, it is one of my goals. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave this video here, guys. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Quite pleased with what we got done today in terms of having to set the camp up again redo the whole thing again trying out a new overhang system that will fold down when i leave so i'll show you the camp fold down once i uh, am about to go anyway i'm rambling thank you very much for watching guys i really hope you enjoyed it as always if you're new here please consider subscribing uh, with the bell notification on it genuinely means a massive amount to me every single subscription it really does mean a lot it means the world to me that you guys appreciate uh, the content that i'm making so if you like it, please consider it. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you very, very, very soon. Take care. All right, well, here we go, guys. We're all packed up. Camp is locked down. Uh, all right, guys, well, that's it. Camp's all packed up. Um, all I've done is I've taken the two uprights that were here uh, and I've wrapped the paracord that's connected to the top around each of them and I've just folded them into uh, my shelter on the bed itself so i'm hoping fingers crossed that that will mean the wind doesn't blow the whole thing over um, so it would really mean a lot if you guys can keep your fingers crossed as well uh, let's all hope that when i come back to camp to practice some more skills hopefully we still have one standing anyway thank you very much for watching guys